This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE. This is a more budget-friendly version of Samsung's 12.4-inch Android tablet from last year. What makes this so appealing? It's being able to get this big of a screen at a discounted price. But how is it? Let's check it out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. I'm going to be taking a look at this particular tablet today from the point of view of an illustrator. So I'm not really going to touch on everything that the tablet can do. Just hit those major high points that I find interesting. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to be comparing this a lot to last year's Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which was Samsung's first 12.4 inch Android tablet and a device I loved a lot because I think in order to understand the value of what Samsung's doing here, we do have to pit it against its larger, or I shouldn't say larger, it's more expensive and more specced out brother. Quick note, over on my website where I compare all of these devices, I did recently add an Android page just for tablets that I have reviewed. So if you're doing some research and you just wanna find everything in one place, check that out. I picked out the 5G model, which is a little bit more expensive than the base level Wi-Fi model. And the main reason why is because the Wi-Fi model is not yet available here in the US where I am. If we are looking at that Wi-Fi model though, we're talking about a $140 difference between this and the S7 Plus. Now this is a 12.4 inch screen. This, to me, is the appeal of this device. When we're talking about drawing and illustration, the more room that you have, the more luxurious the product feels to use. And that's definitely the case here. For example, if I want the largest Apple iPad, I have to buy the most expensive Apple iPad. So in general, I love the idea that they're taking the largest size and scaling it down at a lower price point, even though the price isn't that much lower yet. So that 12.4 inch screen has a 16 by nine aspect ratio and this is a tft lcd display now this is not the best display out there but it's not bad it looks pretty good i can definitely tell it's not nearly as good as the amoled display on the s7 plus unless you're looking at them next to each other you're not going to necessarily notice the brightness or the color difference the, even though the difference is definitely there i think where you're going to notice the difference the most is in drawing angles now i don't want to say that the drawing angles on the fe are really bad. They're just not as good as they are on the S7 Plus. If you're looking at it straight on, it looks beautiful, but if you have it tilted down, you are gonna notice a difference if you like move forward or tilt your head to the sides. The color is gonna shift on you a little bit. The resolution is the same as the S7 Plus. We have 2,560 pixels by 1,600 pixels. Another big difference in the screen is that this only has a 60 hertz refresh rate instead of 120 hertz refresh rate. So you're going to see that if you're looking at them next to each other. You might miss that if you have that on your phone. Personally, I don't think it's that big a deal, but it really depends on the person. They scaled down some of the other specs as well. For example, the AKG speakers, there's only one on each side instead of two. I can definitely tell there's a difference, but I will say it still sounds really good. The base model FE comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. However, if you jump up to the 128 gigabyte model, that's gonna go up to six gigabytes of RAM. And lastly, if you want eight gigabytes of RAM, jump up to the 256 gigabyte model. There's also a micro SD card along the side, so if you do want more storage, you can add it in yourself. This is the same battery as the S7 Plus, and it also has fast charging with the included USB charger. There's also an eight megapixel camera around the back and a five megapixel camera around the front. That five megapixel camera on the front also does 1080p video, so if you're into video calls, you have that going for you. And also, it's centered in landscape mode instead of in portrait mode, so if you like using your laptop or your tablet that way instead, you're not going to have that weird side eye thing like you do on some iPads. And of course, included here is the S Pen. I really should have said that earlier in the video. That is the reason I'm reviewing this thing. The FE and the S7 Plus look almost identical on the outside, but the FE has a plastic shell and not an aluminum glass back. The main tell is the S7 Plus has a wide angle lens camera along the back. So what they ended up cutting from this device were more of the things that went inside of it than the things on the outside of it. For example, the processor in this isn't gonna be as powerful as what you're gonna find on that S7 Plus. So if you're looking to use this for games, that sort of thing, maybe the plus is the way to go. But from what I found from just drawing and using it on a day-to-day -day basis, the processor was more than capable for what I needed it to do. Something I totally missed, but Zach from Android Digest pointed out to me was that the processor on the 5G model is different than the Wi-Fi model, and it's not different in a good way 
it's not as good. And if you're paying more, you would expect that the 5G version would at least have the same processor, or if anything, a slightly better one. So maybe stay away from the 5G version. I also have a keyboard case that I got for the S7 Plus. That works here as well. I've said in other videos, I wasn't necessarily a particularly big fan of that keyboard case. The keyboard itself is fine. Typing on it is fine. It was the mouse and the cursor seemed to be kind of laggy. Sometimes it would take time to wake up. Also, the keyboard case doesn't snap into place. It's not held in place by magnets, so it seems kind of wiggly when you're carrying it. It feels cheap when you attach it to a really premium device. Samsung also has a new keyboard cover that they've rolled out for this device. I don't have one because, well, I've got a cheap, but that one doesn't have the trackpad. So if you take the trackpad away, that probably is gonna remove a lot of my complaints about the old keyboard case. Let's talk about the S Pen because this is really the reason I really enjoy Samsung products. The S Pen is a fantastic stylus to draw with. The main thing that I'm looking for in any kind of pen is just one, how smooth are the lines? The lines here are very smooth. Two, I wanna see how the pressure reacts. For example, I don't wanna see the blowout on the pressure curve like when you're halfway drawing a circle or trying to do a smooth transition or anything like that. If you've ever been using a brush with opacity and all of a sudden you press a little bit harder and all of a sudden way too much paint comes out, you know what I'm talking about. This pen does very well in both of those categories. The other thing that I'm always looking at when I'm using one of these is palm rejection. And in general, most apps will let you toggle on extra palm rejection, so that's not gonna happen. Occasionally, you are gonna get marks and things like that on the canvas, so a lot of people do like to toggle that off. It's not quite as good in the palm rejection category as, say, the Apple Pencil, but it's definitely good enough. Quick note, unlike the S7 Plus, this is just a standard S Pen, which means there's no Bluetooth connectivity or remote control features, functions, or gestures here. And when we're talking about drawing, the one thing that you might miss here is that extra refresh rate, which is going to give you less lag on your pens. Not a ton, but you are gonna notice it if you're looking at these two devices next to each other. I don't think most people are gonna be looking at these devices next to each other. Honestly, I think the 60 Hertz refresh rate is absolutely fine. It's nice to have more, but you don't need it. The S Pen has a rubbery tip. Hard plastic styluses tend to slide around on glass screens like this. What the rubber tip does for you is it gives you more control. It does take a little bit of time getting used to. It doesn't feel natural, and I would not recommend putting any kind of screen protector on this, at least a textured one, because that's really gonna wear down this soft tip quickly. The pen does magnetically attach along the back. It stays put, that is a good magnet. It also magnetically attaches along the top. That's not a particularly great magnet, that's going to fall off. So if you attach it on the top or along the side, whatever you want to call that, and slide into it into a bag, your pen's going to fall off. You might lose it. Now, whenever we're talking about an Android tablet, if you're looking at this versus Windows or an iPad or something like that, the big thing that I always point to are the apps. Now, there are some apps on Android nowadays that I absolutely love. For example, Clip Studio, one of my favorite drawing and painting apps out there. It is available for Android. There is a monthly subscription price after I think it's a three or six month you know, trial period which you can get it and try it out for free. But if you're really invested in drawing, it is fantastic. There are some free apps out there. Huion made their own app. Uh, I just started using it again after not using it for months and wow, they've made some improvements here. Huion Sketch is a free app that is really, really good. If you have an Android device, it's free. I think you should download it and try it. I think they've done a great job here and it's it's cool to see what they're doing. It's still missing some key features like you can't use masks yet and things like that. Maybe you can and I haven't dug into it enough but I couldn't figure it out on the first try. But either way, I love where they're going with that, especially for a free app. Another one I really like is Infinite Painter. There's iBez Paint X, that's free. Infinite Painter has some in-app purchases but it's still a very good app. There's Sketchbook made by Autodesk, another really good app. If you sign up for an account there, that is also free. One thing I hear about a lot in the comments, so I'm gonna mention it here, is a feature I never use, which is called Dex, which allows you to take your Samsung phone or your Samsung tablet and basically plug it into a monitor and use it as, you know, a desktop computer. Conceptually, I like the idea. Carrying it out, personally, I don't find a lot of use in it but a lot of people who do absolutely swear by it. So no, that's a thing. Another thing that Samsung has added is the ability to screen share with Windows computers, which basically is like an extra screen or an extra monitor that you can use besides your laptop. Even a lot of the drawing functionality of the S Pen works there. And if you don't have a touchscreen computer or monitor, 
boom, now you do. Off to the side. All right, so what do I think about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE? Overall, I think it's a great product, but, and you all feel a butt coming on here, I think the price is a little too high. For example, last year what Samsung did around this time, maybe a little earlier in the year, is they released a product called the Tab S6 Lite. It was one of my all-time favorite Samsung tablets. Not because it was the best Samsung tablet, but because it was the cheapest Samsung tablet. But the things they cut weren't the things you absolutely needed, right? The processor wasn't the best. The screen wasn't the best. Uh, the materials it was made out of weren't the best. However, the drawing experience was just as good as their expensive tablets. And oftentimes you could find it on sale for under $300 after it was released. And finding something that good at that price, it's really hard to justify really anything else in that price range that comes near it. Maybe the Apple iPad, but that was about $100 more once you add in, the, add in the Apple Pencil. So the Tab S6 Lite was phenomenal, and what I was hoping the FE would be would be this year's version of that. And in many ways it is, right? They removed a lot of the features, they got that price down, but I don't think they got it down far enough. Holding it in my hands and feeling it and using it, it, it does feel a lot more premium, especially like the build materials that they've used compared to the S6 Lite. But at the end of the day, all you care about is the drawing experience and being able to get a 12.4 inch tablet versus a nine point whatever inch tablet that's a really nice jump up. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Samsung tends to discount their products over time. And I think if they can get the price of this product down to, I don't know, under $500, down to $400, heck, if you could get this for $400, a 12.4 inch tablet for $400, that is an amazing, amazing deal. Heck, even at $500 getting something at this size, I think is definitely justifiable right now. I don't think the price is there. Right now, I think you might be better off spending that extra money and going up and just getting the S7 Plus. Or what we might see is them release next year's version, the S8, whenever that's gonna come and hope that the S7 Plus goes on sale then. Either way, I think this is a really good product and I have no problem recommending it it's just the price that's holding me back a little bit. I don't think the price per value is quite there yet. I think it will be in the future when this gets discounted. So maybe hold off for a few months and see where this goes. So that's all I got for today. Do you have any questions about the FE edition of this tablet? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.